Hi, right, it's Carl. Let's make games here. Let's make the game loop. So we're going to start a new project and we'll call this 2D engine because that's what it's going to be. It's going to be the start of our 2D game engine. 2D game engine. Next. Right. Once you've created a new project, you need to get SDL installed in your project. Um, links are in the description for how to do that for Xcode and Visual Studio. Um, so I'm just going to quickly skip ahead. You can watch the other videos if you need to watch that again. So there we go, SDL framework. And we have our main function. We're going to clear all that out. We don't need any of that. Right. <clears throat> the whole idea of the game loop is that it continuously goes over everything we need to do. So while game is running, we will handle any user input then we will update all objects for example uh, for example positions etc ooh we don't want to be doing that positions and then we'll render changes to the display the whole idea is that we do this over and over again until the game's not running anymore and we've quit or the characters died so this is what we're going to implement so let's make games all right so first thing is we need to create a game class so create a new c++ file i'm going to call game Right. So in the game header, we are going to include SDL. So we're going to need to know how this is going to be responsible for initializing that for us. Windows users won't need this here, it'll just be that. But if you're on a Mac, then you'll need that. Right, so in our game class definition, we're going to define our game class. So class game curly braces with semicolon on the end. Right, in here, we're going to have a public members and private members. Right, so things are going to be publicly available to other classes from here are going to be the constructor which we're going to use to construct the game object the deconstructor for when we close it right and as we said this class has got to be responsible for updating and sdl and everything else so what we're going to have we're going to have a method for initializing it and we're going to have this taking const char star which is basically a string um, called title we want int now x position and an int y position and then we can have int width and also an int for height now one thing I'm going to do is also taking a bool called full screen and this will allow us to easily flag whether we want the game to be full screen or not when we create the game right after we've initialized we're going to need to an update function this will list go through all our game objects and update them all we'll need a void render Uh, 
Um, I have to update, render, we need to be able to clean. You do some memory management for us and clear the game objects from memory once we've finished with them. We're also going to need to handle events. If we put them in order, we're going to do them. Um, so we can initialize this. Now then it'll be handling events. So void handle events. Right. Now, to let the main function know that the game should still be running, we'll create another function called void running. Now this will return a boolean actually, so ball running. And then when in our while loop, when we initialize it, we can ask the game class, are you running? And if it's true, then it'll run the loop again. So we'll handle all the events, we'll update, render. So for all this to work, um, our private variables are going to, we need a ball saying, so call it is running. And then also we need an SDL window and renderer. So SDL window called window and an SDL renderer, which we'll call renderer. Right, now we have all these, what we're going to do is define them all. Well, we've already defined them. So this is everything that our game class at this moment is going to be responsible for. We now need to do the source code for each of these. So in the game CPP file, we are going to create game deconstructor Ooh. and constructor. So we've got that. Then we also need to declare in it which basically we're just going to copy this out. So I can just double click these. And um, that's Xcode. Not sure if you can in Visual Studio, but if not, just type them out like that. Um, so that's where we're going to initialize our SDL. Um, we can have our update function and this is where we would have the game update all its positions we can have void render or we're going to have handle events up here won't we so void game class handle events Render, and then we've also got a clean function. So void game clean. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven functions. Make sure we've declared them all. Nope, we've missed running. So we're going to do that. Actually, what we'll do with running, we'll just make it inline. So we'll just make this return is running and that's that done so one two three four five six seven right now let's add some code to this right so let's start with SDL right so firstly when we initialize SDL we want to make sure that it initializes properly didn't create any errors before we start creating windows and renderers. So what we're going to go is if, and we're going to call SDL init as we did before in the previous videos, and we're going to pass in SDL 
to init everything. Now, if that is equal to zero, then we have successfully initialized the SDL subsystems. So what we're going to do, we're going to add some output to the console so we can see what's going on behind the scenes. So we're just going to print out subsystems initialized. And we just do that. And see out. No, sorry. Not see out. End line. Right, that's done. Now, with STL initialized, we're going to create the window. So we're going to take our window that we declared in our header file and we're going to go STL create window. Now, this is where we pass in the title, the exposition, the y position, the width, height, and the full screen, which we can't pass in because it takes a uint32 flags. So we'll deal with that one in a second. So we're going to pass in title and we're going to go exposition, y pos, and width and height. We just go width, height. Right, for flags, we'll leave that for a moment. What we're going to do. We'll create an int called flags equal to zero. And in here, where it wants flags, we will pass in flags. So if we want full screen, we can adjust this flags value like such. So if full screen is true, we can set flags equal to SDL window full screen so when we initialize this game we can decide whether we want it to be full screen or not just by passing your true or false into the argument it makes it nice and easy for us let's remove that line right SDL right there we go in that now I've got a problem here undeclared use of that so we don't have io stream oh so i'm going to change that there to io stream and that'll fix that problem all right now we've got standard there we go so that's done then we're going to create the window then we're going to check make sure the window has been done properly so if window true basically anything other than zero um, then it means it's been created so we can output so see out window created and, and then end line once that's done we can now create the renderer so our renderer is going to be equal to STL create renderer and we're going to pass in our window that we've just created and pass in its index and flags and we can do the same make sure the renderer will let us know if the renderer has been created successfully or not and we'll just copy this line here and paste that in there. We'll change that to renderer. Renderer is created. If this has all worked, what we're going to do is make is running equal to true. Otherwise, so else, we will set is running to false. So if, in, if SDL doesn't initialize correctly, we will have the boolean is running set to false. So when we check for it in the main loop to see whether we should carry on running the game, it will see that it's false and it won't run the game. 
So that will be SDL initialized for us. Next thing we want it to do is handle any events. So what we're going to do first for this one, we are just going to look out for the event SDL quit. Um, SDL event, and we'll call it event. And then we can poll that event with SDL poll event pass the reference event because it won't to know exactly where it is. Now, what we can do is run a switch statement on this and find out what type of event it is. So what we're going to do is switch and its expression, we're going to check for event type. Now, if that event type is equal to SDL quit, which is there, we are going to set is running to false. So when we click the X on the window, we will generate an event called SDL quit, which will then get found by our handle events and stop the game from running on its next loop. Right. One thing we want to do now is the render. This is where we render our objects to the screen. So first thing to do is to clear what's in the renders buffer, renderers buffer. So we can go SDL render clear and pass in the renderer. And this is where we would add stuff to render. And then we present and present render up right, once we've done that when we quit the game we want to clean up after ourselves so we're going to go SDL um, no destroy and we're going to destroy the window so pass in our window and we're also going to destroy our renderer And then we're going to call SDL quit, which will close off all the subsystems. And then we will also put, we'll see out game cleaned. All right, one thing we can do now is if we, once we've created the renderer, in here before we render a created we can use set the render draw color so SDL set render draw color we're going to set this to white so we're going to pick the renderer so there we go now have that update render clean so now we've implemented start of our game class we can start using this in the main loop now to create our game loop so in our main cpp file we're going to make sure we include our game header file and first of all we need to create an instance of game so we're going to create a game called let's make it a pointer game I'm going to make that equal to a null pointer for now. And in our main function, this is where we'll declare it. So we'll go game is equal to a new game. Now for the game loop. So not, not much to it. So while, now the condition is going to be if the game is running so if the game is meant to be running we'll run our statements in which case will be game we want to handle our events and we're going to go game then we're going to update our objects and we're going to go game and we're going to go 
render all our objects to the scene. Now, we will be stuck in this as long as running is equal to, is equal to true. When it becomes false, we're going to quit our game, which means we need to run game clean. And that's it, that's our game loop. So, press play now, we have our game window. Game cleaned, program ended with exit code zero. That's right, because we didn't initialize SDL, so is running, never got to true. So let's initialize now. So game, I'm gonna call that our init function. Now, this is where we can put in our title, x position, y position, width, height, and wherever we want the window to be. So we're gonna call this, I'm just going to call it Birch Engine. Our position on screen, I'm going to use SDL window pause centered, which will just give us the center of the window. And that's the same again here SDL window pause centered. Our width and height, I'm going to have it 800 wide by 600 high. And do I want full screen? Not at this moment. Right, now when we run it, we should get our game. So, build succeeded. Right, there's our game screen. And you can see here, we've initiated, initialized SDL. We've created our window and the render is created. Now, this is um, pretty boring. You can't really tell if anything's working, even though I assure you it is. One way to test this is to put something in our update loop that we can watch. So we're going to quit this and you can see the game gets cleaned once we quit it. Now game.update is where we handle all our game logic and things like that. So if we go into game, in what we're going to do, we're going to create a local variable. No we're not, yeah. So what we're going to do in private, just for them to watch, we're going to put in a counter, so we call it int count, and we'll just call it that. So, what we can do now in our game under update, we can basically go count plus plus, which basically every time this gets updated, we can increment our counter by one. So, what we're going to do. So we can see this work, we can go standard, and we're just going to see out whatever the counter is. And so, and I'm just going to initialize that to zero in here, because that'll be just some random variable. So we're going to do that, and we'll hit play. Now what we'll see in our console, you can see that counter is getting updated. So what we've actually got happening here is in our main function, we've initialized our window. Now it's true at the moment, it's handling our events, um, which we're not doing anything at the moment. It's then calling games update function, which is here. So the plan is from here is not really to have all the game logic in this update function, but for this update function to have all the game objects we're going to have. So the player will have its own update function and we'll just call the player's update function from here and we can keep it all separate. And what we can do is from here, we can just exit that off and we've cleaned the game. So let's try making it full screen. So it's going to do the same thing. So in main, when we start it, we're just going to set this value here to true. And when we run the game, we'll have a full screen window. Which here's our window. Uh, now, 
it's full screen, we don't have any controls, so you'll have to use Alt and F4 to quit out, or Mac, Command Q, we'll do that. And there we go, we have our game loop, which is working. Next episode, what we're going to do is bring in an image and start moving it around the screen. See you next week.